Hi guys. <laughs> How'd you like that intro? We're getting very, very fancy. Hi everybody. Cheers from the mom cave tonight. It's Thursday night. It is 7.32. I see you guys all jumping in already. This is awesome. Hi Daria, Patty, Mercy, Jerry, Barbara. Okay guys, a lot of things are happening tonight. First of all, thank you so much for tuning in. I know that we don't have a lot to do as far as going out, but there's always a lot to do at home. So appreciate you tuning in. A um, couple of different things happening tonight. One, we are trying brand new technology in case you haven't already noticed, um, but it's about to get really fancy. So I'm super excited. And of course, with live anything, anything can happen. So bear with us. Um, and the second thing we're doing is we're trying this, um, this new series that I've been dreaming up for a long time, but um, I think now is the absolute perfect time because we absolutely need to connect with one another. So this is called Mom to Mom. I'm Maria, if I don't already know you. And tonight we're going to be talking to one of my mom friends. I think that, um, you know, all week for the last couple of weeks, I've been checking in with all my friends, whether it be on Zoom or text or um, all these other newfangled things, Marco Polo, house party, you name it. I've just been checking in on everybody. And I figured, you know what? Why not do it live? Like in my jammies from my mom cave. So that's what we're going to do tonight. Hi, Ari. Hi, Marissa, Kathy. And of course, we'll include all of you as well. We'll just get everything off our chests. Um, it's never easy being a mom. And particularly right now, it's bananas. So let me take a sip and introduce my guest who I hear giggling in the background. Okay, so since we're on the Hub page, if you are a viewer of the Hub, a fan of the Hub, my guest needs no introduction at all. Um, she is the OG of the Hub, has been there since day one. She is a TV host. She is my coworker, my friend. She is a mom of two, a boy and a girl, just like me. Um, a real Renaissance woman. She's amazing in the kitchen. You may have even seen her on Master Chef, which we've never actually talked about. So I'd love to talk about that tonight. Um, she has chickens and knows how to like tap maple trees. Let's bring her in, Anna Rossi. <laughs> we've got a lot to learn from her. <laughs> Tapping those maple trees for sure. <laughs> Is it maple trees that you tap? Yes, I am. Okay. I, don't, I, I don't see you I yet. Don't, I don't see myself yet either. But I'm, but I hear I'm, you. I'm, I'm here for you, Maria. <laughs> It'd be a great podcast. Anything can happen. Sure. I know anything can happen. So, um, in a perfect world, Anna, her little face will be sliding in in a two box any second now. But in the meantime, I'll say hi to some of our other Facebookers while we figure out the technology to get you into the picture with me because I haven't seen your face in real life. I miss you so much. Lucky me. I get to see your face and you're missing. So I'm down in my, my mom cave right now and not all of my little ones are asleep. So oh, yeah. your, your house seems really quiet, but you're, I, I am being presented with the most unbelievable cardboard castle. Oh, how nice. Well, what time, time do you go to bed? What um, time do your kids go? Go to bed? Yeah. Um, seven. So it's, you know, like, we like to, oh, oh, look. Hi. Let me hear you. Are. Opportunity. Hi, guys. Oh. <laughs> so, next, you want to say hi? So I, I'm in my mom cave downstairs. Aw. Max. Hi, bud. At seven o'clock bedtime, but he was doing a little... Catholic yeah. Catholic well, these days all bets are off as far as bedtime, wake up time, all of that. We'll get into all of that. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. So tell us how old your kids are for people who are just jumping in and tuning in. Tell us a little bit about your family and um, what you got going on over there right right now. Yeah. So we have a full house. We have. Can I? Can I? You know, this is my friend Maria from the Hub today. And you're, you sprung out of jail upstairs. So Max is in kindergarten, and then Charlotte is in pre-K, um, and um, and then we have a friend who has been helping with the kids visiting from Costa Rica, who's stuck with us now. And, oh my god! <laughs> and our little dog Mo, she uh, named Lucy. So we we have a full house, and you're so lucky to be stuck with a helper, though. Oh my god. <laughs> 
it's just us. <laughs> so, and I'm, I'm just she's, struggling. She's like what? You, yes, we're very lucky. Um, struggling over here. So we both have a six-year-old. So my daughter Grace is six, um, and in kindergarten or was in kindergarten. I don't know. It's real. Um, and then little Benny is two and a half. And so that's been part of our struggle with this whole stay at home schooling whole situation is the kids are so the disparity there. I mean, Grace will sit and listen, you know, to a lesson or do something on the iPad, but the little guy is just ruining everything. There's there he is. Well, I love that's so cute. I love Benny bears on deck with the um with the um conference calls. Yeah, you know what? I was actually on the phone with you and everyone from the hub today um, while Benny was trying to comb my hair. I mean, I don't know how it has been for you, but this whole work from home thing is, it's awesome that we're still able to do it and that we found ways to broadcast. Like there I am broadcasting with the Barbie Dream Camper <laughs> doing the dream. interviews and things. I mean, it's incredible. I feel so lucky that we're able to do it, but I'm having such a hard time. Yeah. finding these windows where I can actually focus. I mean, the kids are like, you're on your phone all the time. And it's really it's hard. I totally agree because I feel like it's compartmentalizing. Like mine are a little bit closer together, but they still do have different needs and interests. And so mm -hmm. not only is it like, you know, being a hundred percent energy, but the right in the right space. And I, I feel like the art of compartmentalizing right now is so is the task at hand for parents because yeah. it's it's not only compartmentalizing our time like the work-life balance and i feel so lucky like you said that we still get to work but also like the emotions like when i'm with my kids i want to be optimistic and excited about math <laughs> and <laughs> yes eal or whatever and and then when do i give myself time to just be really scared and <laughs> worried about like yeah and then also letting them see a little bit of that so that they feel comfortable with their emotions too like today was my first yesterday i was on the verge of something i don't know what it was breakdown like something was something was going on yeah and then today i organized i'm so proud of myself because i'm not the organizer even though i'm the room parent i'm like terrible at that kind of thing. I like to someone else plan the party and I just show up. <laughs> <And this. laughs> I think you're better at it than you give yourself credit for. Maybe it. because I actually organized a Zoom for my son's class. And um, anyway, it's his little two and a half year old, you know, toddler class. And so all his little friends were in there and the teachers and they started singing and reading books to the kids. And I just started yeah. sobbing. Yeah, it was so sweet and cute and sad and all the things. And I had that moment where I could have hid from my older daughter, mm. from Grace, and I and she kind of looked at me and I said, "I I feel sad. I yeah. feel a little sad. That makes me feel sad." And I just figured I'd share that with her so that she could see that like it's okay, you know. I don't know how everyone at home is is dealing with the emotional component of it. I'd love to hear. Um, we've got so many people tuning in, Raylene, Tudor, Mike, Michelle, Michelle says, think the quarantine would be easier if your kids were older. <sighs> I, I've talked to friends who have high schoolers. I mean, I think college, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, when I think about where I was at, it, yeah. like college, but like, you know, in, in high school, I think you just have different problems, right? Like, you know, yeah. the, the structure is so much different, like I mean, maybe they're not like, maybe they can put their jammies on by themselves for their dad's oh. issues. I think that we're kind of at an, a nice age because I think within a couple of years, the friend thing becomes so crucial and important. Oh, yeah. Do you want to say hi? Mm -hmm. Speaking of one of my little ones, oh, he's which supposed one? to be in bed. Well, I oh, that's mommy's ring light. Please, please be careful. It's a glow. <laughs> Everything falls apart like Cinderella at midnight. This is great. That's what Anna. Anna. Remember today I was talking about Anna Rossi? I've seen you. I've seen you on TV. My friend from the hub. And you just missed her son, who's six years old, too. Maybe another FaceTime play date opportunity. Uh, definitely. We've got nothing but time. Divide and conquer. 
actually today, this was really great. One of the things you did, you want to go with daddy and go to bed? No, I don't. That I should never ask that as a question. You're going to go with daddy and you're going to go to bed. That's a terrible idea. <laughs> I always yell at Josh for doing that. I'm like, never ask a child a question if the answer is already established. Right. Oh, it's a I just it. broke my own rule. Um, oh, I wanted to share something we did today that was, that I thought, oh, really successful so because I think we need right. to celebrate the um, the accomplishments in the day because there are plenty of fails. But one of the things we did, because I see my aunt is tuning in, my Aunt Raylene, um, I'm starting to delegate to different family members. And I said, okay, I have to get some work done at like 1.30. How about if you do a FaceTime lesson with her? And so I picked something up my aunt's alley. I said, you know, pick like an inspiring female, empowering woman and teach Grace about it. So they did like a half hour lesson. I got to do my work. And was Grace able to really hone in? And she is. She's a good student. She's a she's everything my son is not as far as like attention. Right. Because sometimes we take our iPad to the potty. It's like a show and tell that no one needs to see. Yes. I feel like there's going to be some unintended consequences with the all this sharing on the Zoom and all these things because I leave it on and some weird stuff's going to happen for sure. Definitely. Um, um, well, what about with you and Josh? Like, do you have anything that's really worked well? Because I know he's busy with work too. Like, how you how you divide and conquer the day? Girl, it's not good. <laughs> Because this is what I was thinking. I was saying to AJ earlier, I'm like, this is going to go into the new round of marital vows. Like, would you mind being in quarantine with a <laughs> person for minimum two months? Because I can think and of another friend friends out there that would say, nah, -uh. <laughs> I got well, I mean, not for nothing. And I'm not talking about myself personally, but people are saying that in nine months, there's going to be quarantine babies. And I'm like, how about quarantine divorces? <laughs> Same thing. Not me. Like, I feel. I feel like I married the right guy. I feel like he's like. Yes. He's like in his element. He is like. He is like a survivalist. Like wannabe. He's been planning. I mean, pre preparedness is his middle name. Let's talk about AJ. So, so you've said he's a Renaissance man, but I look at you as a Renaissance woman. Okay. Oh. This is a girl who's out there. Tapping trees. I wouldn't know the first thing about this. What's going on here? So you you get more. We're 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 making maple syrup. Times times are tough. I don't want to mm -hmm. be reliant on anyone. So yeah, we have a couple of maple trees. You get the most maple syrup. Fun fact: out of sugar maples, to my knowledge, but any maple will do. And um, I can't remember. AJ has all the math, but we, we wow. Have, when the we've got that one slowly filling up with maple water and then we have a burner outside we're going to reduce it down and it will probably be good one for one pancake because you need a hell of a lot of maple water to make maple syrup but that's such a great thing for the kids to get in on i mean that's what we did when we started a little little garden You're outside driving. i mean i got like you know one salad out of it but the kids... <laughs> but there were memories made Memories made for a lifetime. So I didn't know you way back when you were on Master Master Chef, right? Yeah. yeah. And so were you married at the time? I was. It was my dream to be the Jada of New England. And I got an announcement saying Master Chef was in town casting. And then I don't know if you know this, but AJ was on too. Yeah. I so and I signed him up because I He's a good cook, but I thought he was going to be bored waiting in line for me to audition. And then Fox was like, this is amazing. Like a husband and wife putting their dignity on the line, not to mention their marriage. And then we, we they cast, they cast us. And then, um, yeah, the rest, the rest is history. But it's, it's now I feel like every night at home cooking is a mystery box challenge. Like I get these shipments of organic produce once a week. I don't know what's going to be in it. I have like the weirdest sundries right now like yeah like it's kind of like the good it's, stuff but then odds and ends and it's getting it's bad over here now like i had to do like a crap single grilled cheese yesterday and that's that's like that food no till the end of the world here so it's just i miss i'm like 
uh, I'm like, am I ever going to have produce again? And starting to panic. I wish that I did have the big garden outside and I was self-sufficient. <laughs> but you do. What are you doing? Have you started re uh, revamping? Not yet. Yeah. I have to start fresh again. So actually, that's a segment I'm working on for the hub that um, actually I'm going to finish up tomorrow. So I'll be talking to someone who can help me. I'm a little bit challenged in that department. I just need a little help getting started and then I can, you know, how does my garden grow? <laughs> so, so I'm seeing all these questions here. We're gonna take all your questions um, in a minute. I just wanted to check in with Anna and just see if there was anything, um, like we like to do rose and thorn around here. You know, you talk about your rose of maybe the week or the thorn of the week. Did you have something that really worked for you and then something that was, a total fail that maybe our viewers can relate to. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's so, that's such a great way to look at every day. So I really, I've made, like I've been doing some meditation in the mornings and I made, I, I tried to center myself at the beginning of the day with the intention of um, like, you know, this is just going to be a blip in our family's history and story, you know, the little four of us. And I want, like when my kids, when they look back being 30 and 40, that the, this is like a time where like they had the most fun with us and they learned mm -hmm. the most and we were outside all the time. And that's when they made their own maple syrup and that we, that it's just a beautiful time for them. And we have been eating together in the evenings and baking a lot. And like those, I feel like that was a win this week. I, I feel like it's, it's really difficult, the balance between, you know, both being working and trying to hang on to what is to come. Yeah. Um, is you like, made a beautiful fish dish last night on Instagram. <laughs> Thank you. Look. So that's it. That's the rose. But the thorn is like the balance. I could do better. I lose my patience. My four is a mess. I. What about you? Um. So I'll start with the thorn and end with the rose. <laughs> So okay, thorn, and there have been plenty of thorns, um, but the big one uh, was a couple days ago. Um, Benny still puts things in his mouth and ate like a sticker and started gagging and threw up all over our white carpet. We only have carpet in one room of the house. And he decided that that would be the place, like <laughs> the thorn. <laughs> so Benny threw up all over the white carpet and as I was tending to him and dealing and then going to get the stuff to clean it the dog goes in I'm like no <laughs> and Ralph proceeded to obviously eat the vomit um so Josh was upstairs on a conference call because he's still working full-time and I'm like Josh get down here Ralph is eating throw up that was my thorn um, now to the rose. So something we did that I thought was super successful, and I shared this with some of my other mom girlfriends, and they really loved it, and their friends are loving it. For a lesson type thing, we did a restaurant. So all afternoon when Benny was asleep, Gracie and I planned the restaurant, and I talked to her about creating a logo and developing a meal and would be on it and how much would things cost and we, there were so many little lessons in economics and business within our day, and she was loving it, and I was loving it. And then when it was dinner time, Josh and I went out to the front door, and there was a little open sign on it, and she, we came in, and she was the hostess, and we let her serve us, and she played music, and it was a very successful, like, four-hour endeavor. That's so, amazing. What was yeah. on the menu? What did you serve? Um, ooh, it was not my finest night. I was actually really aggravated by the food that night, but I, of course, the, the atmosphere was amazing. <laughs> we had leftover pasta and hot dogs. I was like, this is, and we had no buns. We were, we're out of buns. It's all about the no vegetable. It was just like pasta and hot dogs cut up. I'm like, this is not, this is not good. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds well I I beg to differ that sounds amazing I'm gonna try but five it. stars for the restaurant <laughs> <laughs> and so, that's so great finding those applied moments yeah. yeah all right let's see what some of our Facebookers are saying um Marcy said slow motion no <laughs> Anna can you see all the comments too 
I'm just seeing if I can. It's so cool. I'm loving our new technology. Does everyone see us nice and clear? Are we looking good? This is our first time using this, and I'm I'm impressed. Uh oh, David says, "What do you do when you get cabin fever?" My wife is driving me insane. <laughs> oh, get some fresh air, but on your own property, right? Isn't that the rule right now? Is it? Are you supposed to stay? I, I figured it would come to that. I don't know. I'm 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 erring on the side of caution. Yeah. So we've been we've been doing that too. So yeah, I would say fresh air. So many friends of mine were all like, "I'm running now." <laughs> we're not runners. But it's just something to do to get out there. And you've been getting up nice, like, early before everybody. That's one of my goals. I think that would be so key to just get up before the rest of the crew and just have a minute to either do a little yoga, meditate, have a cup of coffee, something. I get mad when I don't get that minute either. And I find, like, even – I just need, like, five minutes. Like, I'd like more. I'd like 25. But, like, I if I don't get it, I'm, like – trying to steal it back from my family all day long. Yeah. <laughs> you owe me that. Yeah. But I, I haven't been exercising as much as I would like. I am taking the kids for a walk in the neighborhood with our really asocial six pound mall sheet that is like all about social distancing yeah. in the morning. So, but I, I feel like I need to tap back into my beach body on demand. <sighs> but who needs it? <laughs> We're not going to the beach. <laughs> I'm trying to, yeah, I have moments where I'm like, I need to get my act together. I need to get up earlier. I need to exercise more. I need to find a schedule. And then I'm also having moments of being completely gentle with myself mm. and allowing some grace because this is unprecedented. We've never been faced with this. We don't know what we're doing. We're just figuring it out as we go. So we'll get there. But I think now, am I drinking wine every night? Perhaps. No judgment. <laughs> Whatever gets you through at this point. And then every week you can start fresh. Every day you can start fresh, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I always see Lisa Sugarman getting up early is the best way to extend your day and give insanely busy moms little much needed quietude. I agree, Lisa. She's great at that. Well, she gets up super early. Lisa's a friend of mine. You, did you meet Lisa? Only she was on the hub. Like, I feel like I know yeah. digitally. An awesome mom expert who wrote a book called How to Raise Perfectly Imperfect Kids. I mean, that's perfect for our conversation. Yeah. She gets up super early and um, works out hard with November Project and that kind Ooh. of stuff. Good. Yeah. Grief. Good. Yeah. Like Great. five a.m. club. Walking Ooh. the talk. How are you getting work done? I'm drowning. Oh, Joelle. Same. <laughs> Ugh. I'm drowning too. I've used that exact, those exact words. Like there are moments where I just do feel like I'm drowning. I do feel like breathing helps. It's so mm -hmm. simple, but just someone taught me recently on the hub, we did a segment on meditation mm -hmm. and mindfulness and they taught me about box breathing. So Joelle, look up box breathing and it's just basically how you count the breathing and you kind of do it like a box and it just kind of slows your breath. And because when the kids are about to drive me crazy, a deep breath is about all you can do. And half the time you'll realize you kind of aren't, you're doing those short little breaths. Right. When yeah, you're about to freak out. I, I saw that piece you did. It was excellent. And I, I share on the weekend show, cause we were going to air that piece, how I, I like to do it on my leg under the table if like I'm, I'm and no one knows that I'm doing it it's just like my little but that rhythm really helps of creating the box it's that was such a great message to share right now because and then I've been listening to on google or alexa or whatever what the ocean sounds like at night and it's because I I do feel like this is a wave like this whole experience and oh man it is. And you're right. Like you said earlier, it is going to be a blip. And I think for the kids, they'll probably look back somewhat fondly on the time that they were at home with their families and they'll say, oh yeah, that was weird. Or that was this or that. But it really is just a moment in time and we will get out on the other side. If I start thinking too far ahead, that's when I get a little cuckoo. I'm just like, keep your head down, one foot in front of the other. You know, don't look where the finish line is because there isn't quite one yet. Just keep keep on swimming. Yeah. 
What's that from? Nemo, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. Um, Yoko, hi. Oh, he's been a follower for a long time here on Facebook. Um, since my days back on the nine, Randy says, that sounds great. Oh, she was talking to Marcy. Um, so we used to live in New York City. And then after that, we lived in LA. And we just keep saying that we're so happy to be here hmm. in New England. I mean, now we have a little yard outside and we've got neighbors that we can kind of like wave to where before we were always in apartments and condos and in these big, big cities. Um, so it does feel nice to be in a little bit of suburbia and knowing even though that we can't talk to be this like this with our family that they are just right there yeah so that's nice it feels good to be in a community it's great yeah um oh people talking about anxiety mm. raylene says this is a precious time families together yeah yeah, you know what, as we start to wrap up here, I think that is a positive. There there are some like tremendous positives in this that I'm seeing all the time. I don't know about you, but like there's just these, I'm learning more about my kids. We are spending so much time together, eating every meal together, cooking so much, really learning to be resourceful too, not wasteful. I think so, it's really um, like we're just, it's like, like home is such a, can, can be in our busy life, such an abstract concept. And I feel like it, I'm reminded that there is just nothing more important than home and, and right. the people that live here. And I, I do, I, it's nice, Maria. I thank you. I'm like, I, and it's like getting to know my friends and colleagues in new ways, because like, get like, you know, it feels different in two dimension. But I yeah. think that's really special too. Like you find these um, these connections that like you don't necessarily see normally. I'll tell you what, I've also developed, I always had an appreciation for teachers, but my gosh, I praise the teachers out there and the educators because I started out all gung-ho. I Oh, there we are. <laughs> we created a little classroom in... And the, uh, this was two weeks ago when I was still, I was younger then. <laughs> I was younger then. And I thought that I could actually pull this off and develop some sort of school and lesson plan. And this was on a Sunday. And by Monday, honest to God, by like 9.30 a.m., I was in tears <laughs> practically. Gracie was in tears because Benny was trying to rip everything down. This isn't how it's supposed to be, she said. Well... <laughs> How are you handling the, the teaching at home or whatever we're calling that? I guess we're not calling it homeschool. There's different terminology, but how's it going? So handling it, I agree. Praise goes to the teachers. But I, <clears throat> excuse me, I do find that we have like 15 to 30 minute attention spans. And I write out for myself on a sticky note, like, the agenda. I mean, it's not like hardcore learning, but it's like keeping us moving. Yeah. Even if it's like chore time or walk the dog, like just yeah. keeping them moving. Like, I just can't believe how much they need to move and the snacks. And I keep telling them we're going to run out. <laughs> There's only so many fig bars in this house. I yeah. I don't want to stress them out, but I'm also saying like, we have to be careful with what we're eating because we only, you know, we don't have food like we used to as far as going to the store. But I did take one of your ideas that I saw on Instagram when you had the kids actually go to the bus stop, you yeah. know, instead of going to the bus stop, they kind of just walked around the property and like took the dog for a walk or something. Walking. Yeah. Yeah. So I had the kids. I love that that. Paul just shouted out to all the nurses and doctors out there too. Oh gosh. To the, the teachers, but my, my good friend is a nurse just down the street with two kids, my, my kids ages. And, um, it's just, it's just heroic what the healthcare providers are giving us right now. The nurses. Absolutely. And Paul is one of the best nurses in the entire universe. I happen to know. Thank from you. experience so um yeah it's it's incredible and i think about the parents who you know we're lucky that we get to quarantine at home with the kids there are parents who have to go into a hospital right now and work and they aren't able to come home and be with the kids and stuff so 
you just have to count your blessings, you know? I mean, of course we can vent and commiserate and this is definitely uncharted territory. And so like, let yourself have that. But at the same time, think about there are people who are just, you know, dealing with this in ways that are just horrible. So, yeah. um, Michelle saying Tom stands on temporary color spray works wonders can get them at drugstore. What are they talking about? <laughs> talking about dyeing his hair. <laughs> yeah. Don't do anything your colorist will get mad at you for. Wait, what are we going to do, by the way, on the other side of this? Are we just going to, you don't dye your hair, right? Like, oh, I'm so, I, I am so you're lucky. lucky. You're lucky because. We're going to see a lot of people's true colors. We're going to see true colors. I'm going to have roots like down here. I had to already take my, I never get gel nails and I did it right before this, of course. And so they were all grown out, looking all nasty. So I put the aluminum foil on, did the whole thing, yeah. gave myself a little Manny. Um, I think we have to go. I know. This has been so fun. We'll have to catch up more on that one. I know. It's been like, by the way, do you play that guitar? Um, not well. Josh, I originally started when Grace was born. I decided I wanted to take up guitar. I don't know. I was I, all I wanted to do was like play. If you're happy, and you know, it, clap your hands, which I was successful at doing. Um, and then Josh really took to it. So he plays it for me now. I do love the way it looks aesthetically in the room. It, it gives me that nice boho feel. Yeah, you've got that hipster chic LA vibe. Uh, totally, totally. <laughs> well, it was so, so good to see you. And I hope we do this more often. Um, I'll talk on our call tomorrow and see you on Zoom because that's what we do now. But say hi to your yeah. family and hug them tight and enjoy this like yummy time together. You know, we can we can just try to make it as positive as we can, right? You know, yeah. Thank you, Maria. So and thank you guys you. all for tuning in. This was our very very first episode of Mom to Mom, and that was my friend Anna. And you guys have been awesome. Thank you for all your questions and for um, sticking with us tonight and hanging out. And I hope you had a glass of wine or a glass of something. So we should be back next week with a guest and uh, talking about mom life and all that good stuff. So have a good day, everyone. Stay safe out there. Stay home. Mwah.